Welcome back to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. So guys, today we are going to be talking about something that I know is misunderstood by probably everyone listening to this. Um, you know today's guest from her major, major social media presence with over 600,000 followers on Instagram and a whopping 9 million followers on TikTok. Balin Dupree has been sharing her life, her stories, and her struggles with the world. I was introduced to Balin by my daughter and my daughter's friends who absolutely loved her. It wasn't because she was doing a dance video or giving makeup tricks, although we love those videos too, but Balin was using her platform to share her experiences living with Tourette's syndrome. Now, I think it's really important on my show to highlight um, things that are misunderstood, not just people. So while I am, you know, talking to Balin about her life and her, I really wanted to do this episode to, um, you know, bring awareness that with Balin's help to Tourette's and what it is. Um, I admit, I did not know much about Tourette's before this interview, except for what we see depicted on TV or in the movies. But Balin is so genuine and open that you cannot help but be entranced by her videos. You guys really have to check her out to understand how she lives with this. Her personality shines through. And even when she has tics, she's full of love and charisma. We have the best conversation. Balin talks about living with Tourette's, why sharing her story is so important to her, how opening up changed her life and how she hopes it's helping to change others. She doesn't sugarcoat her struggles, sometimes just showering and eating, putting on makeup, going to school, sitting in class, can be difficult, but with the support of her family, her boyfriend, and honestly, her own courage, she's building a brighter future. Besides being inspirational, she's also hilarious. I'm so excited for everyone to know Balin Dupree. Balin, thank you so much for joining me at Misunderstood. It is such an honor to have you here. Um, I just want to tell you a little story of how I stalked you to get you on my show. <laughs> so, so basically, um, my daughter would walk around the house and sort of yell things like, you're done, you're done to you're me, done. And, and wind it up and like say all these things to me. And I would what say... Else? Exactly. Wind it up. And I would say, Wyatt, what, what are you talking about? And she's like, oh, that's my friend from Instagram, Balin. And so finally I looked you up and I thought your story was so inspirational. Some of your posts have brought me to tears because I think you're just such like the cutest. So I DM'd you and you never got back to me, which is fine because I'm sure you get a lot of DMs. We'll talk about that later of how many you do get. But yeah. um, so the way I figured out how to get you is that my daughter was in an accident and I decided to look you up on Cameo and I found you on Cameo and I requested that you um, send something to my daughter, like a get well card. And you did. And I also said at the very end, listen, I'm not trying to be a stalker, but I would love you on my show. Here's my <laughs> cell phone. And it, and it worked out. You sent my daughter the most wonderful Cameo. She just like burst into tears. She sent it to everyone. First of all, she laughed because you're just the you're so funny and you're so great about your life and about the syndrome that you have, Tourette's syndrome. And also, I think it's so wonderful that you bring such awareness to something that kids might not know what it is. And even a lot of adults, there's so much stigma, st stigmas that goes with. Tourette's syndrome and you just bring so much knowledge to it. So anyways, that is what I wanted to say to you. And, and I really, I'm so thankful that you're here and you made the time. Oh, I'm so thankful you're able to have me. It's so nice to meet you, Rachel. I appreciate you having me. And I'm so grateful that I was able to say hi to Wyatt and, you know, and her little pink cash. She looks so cute. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank God she has that off now. So, all right. <laughs> So let's like get right into this. You were diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome when you were around 17, right? Yes. So what what was life like before you were given that label and you finally figured out what you had? What were your symptoms growing up? So when I was about seven, um, I had 
a lot of neck movements. However, they only came out in like very anxious situations. So it would only be at like school. And I thought it was normal. I thought that it was like something that like everyone did. Like I didn't think anything of it. Um, Kindergarten, like elementary school was probably the worst school years of my life. Um, I like begged my mom to homeschool me. Like I, it was just terrible. I had a lot and a lot of anxiety that stemmed from like when I was a child. Um, fuck, fuck, fuck. Um, so those were kind of the first things I saw. And then we, we moved. I lived in upstate New York when I was younger. And that's when I first started seeing like symptoms when I was like seven. And then I moved to Georgia when I was about... 12, 13. And then I moved to West Virginia when I was 15, 16 years old. And that's when they became a little bit more noticeable again. They completely went away and they became more noticeable and very livable, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I was able to do everything else that everyone wanted to do. However, from a very young age, I've never wanted to drive. I never wanted to get my permit. I I was like, mom, I'm just going to live in New York city. Like I'm just going to live in a city and I don't have to fuck, fuck, fuck your dad. I don't have to worry about driving or any inconvenience that way. And she was like, okay, man. And then it got to where I am now, where I'm like striving to drive, like where I want to learn how to drive. But when I was in high school, my symptoms were very, very mild and it was almost like living like a normal life. Um, it didn't impact anything that I did. Um, I probably fuck, 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 wind up. Oof, oof, oof. Tippy, tippy, top, that wiener, tap, rotisserie chicken. I probably had 10 ticks a day and they, they ranged from clearing my throat to, um, neck movements. Um, and they progressively got worse before COVID. Um, my friends, my friend group at the time started like pointing them out and like being like, what are you doing? What are you doing now? Like we'll be in a silent Ted talk and I like can't stop clearing my throat. And I went to the car, I have a cardiologist and he was like, well, it's your vocal cords. I said, no, you don't understand. I, I can't like, I ha- like, I have to do it. And he was like, I can't help you. And I said, I can't help myself either. So this is going good. And um, then after after it started getting worse before COVID, I went and got a diagnosis for it. And my doctor was like, yeah, this is like Tourette's. Like it's, it's very, very mild. Like it's a very common blank, blank and blank. Um, but it it took a stretch to get to that diagnosis. Because after I was living a normal life with my tics, and I I had TikTok when I when I had tics. Um, however, you couldn't tell that I had Tourette's, um, and I didn't make it my whole platform. I didn't even want a TikTok. Anyone that you talked to from high school, I like did not want TikTok. Mm-hmm. It was like everyone was like dancing, like all this other stuff, and like I just I can't dance. So I just like didn't see like a need for it. And then I was like, okay, I'll make like funny videos or something. And it just came into like a little like, uh, like a laughing thing. And then people started saying stuff about my tics in public and videoing me in public when I was, these were kids I went to high school with. A girl specifically that was in my math class that asked me for math answers on every single exam. I'm not good at math. I'm not good at math. Okay. Not good. So the fact that she was asking me, she got really mad and she like videoed me in the marshals and like sent it around, like bullied me. Oh, so that's terrible. How, that's how um I started making my platform about ticks and Tourette's because like this girl has no idea. Like these kids I graduated high school with were shocked of how bad my ticks were. Like I ran into them a couple people from my high school last year and they came up to me and they're like, oh my God you actually do have Tourette's. And I was like, well, why wouldn't I have Tourette's? And they were like, because you didn't have Tourette's when I was, when you were in high school. I said, I did have Tourette's, but I, I was made fun of. It's gotten progressively. 
Yeah. With I was just made fun of for the little tiny movements that I did or like, why are you doing that? And they thought it was my medicine because I had very, very bad depression when I was in high school and I was taking multiple different amounts of medication to the point where it was giving me manic episodes. Um, and like, I finally felt like good enough and happy. And my friends would be like, stop doing that. You're so annoying. Like certain comments like that, but them not knowing that I had no control over it. <laughs> So the port for today's episode comes from one skin. We all love the fall changing leaves, getting cozy on the couch, watching movies, but it also brings the challenge of dry, dull skin. One skin has the must have skincare that'll make you say goodbye to those cold weather blues and hello to healthy, hydrated, glowing skin. The secret is the revolutionary OS. O1 peptide. Their scientists have shown that it can actually reverse the biological age of skin. Let me repeat that to you. It reverses the biological age of your skin. So your skin doesn't just look healthier and more youthful. It's good for your overall wellness too. To combat that cold weather dry dryness that your skin gets right now and bring back the healthy hydrated glow you thought was only for summer days, head over to oneskin.com co and take a look at their amazing products that will be your skin savior during these colder months for a limited time our listeners can get 15 percent off one skin with our code understood at oneskin.co that's oneskin.co now i've been using um, the products for about three weeks now i'm using the one skin os01 face topical supplement and um, i'm using the eye cream so I just have to tell you that I've tried medical grade topical treatments, several micro needling sessions, even with radio frequency, spa treatments, retinol medicine, stuff like that, a host of other topical beauty products. Nothing has made the visible difference that one skin has. It took about three weeks for me to start seeing real results. And this week I happen to be on week four and I'm really hooked, you guys. I'm not kidding. I've told people about this product. People that are visiting me have tried the eye cream and the face cream, and they have all ordered it. They love it. And I'm not kidding when I say it's different because it reverses aging. So it's not just putting on you know, moisture and adding that to your skin. It's really helping. It increases the epidermal thickness to minimize the look of wrinkles. It supports collagen synthesis. Um, you know, It just feels so good. And you- Honestly, you feel it the second you put it on your skin, but then you really see the results three weeks. I mean, that's really what it took for me. So One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. One Skin addresses skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging skin. So skin feels and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code understood at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with code understood. That's oneskin, O-N-E-S-K-I-N.co with code understood. We only have one body, one skin, and only you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin. So, okay, wait, I have so many questions. So you are one of six children, correct? Yes, I'm the second oldest. Oh, okay. So growing up, did your um, siblings, I mean, you're talking a lot about the kids in your class too, but were they like, Balin, what is this? Stop doing that. And you were trying to suppress it or like, how did it make you feel? Was part of that depression in your high school years because you felt like you were being made fun of or because you felt like you had something you had to express and, and it needed to come out? Like, where do you think all that stemmed from? So. My depression was way before my Tourette's diagnosis. Um, I don't think it had anything to do with my Tourette's. Um, my dad um, has a job where we move around a lot, and it's very it was very, very hard for me to find friends. I've never really had um, real friendships, um, good friendships. Um, however, I am in a place now where I have a couple, and I'm very grateful for that. However, um, I was very, very badly bullied in middle school. Very, very bad. Um, I had a back brace um, for my scoliosis I had to wear for two years. Um, I was very, very sick with chronic Lyme disease. Um, so I was called the sick girl. I was never in school. Um, I always wore sweatpants and a hoodie. Like I just never took care of myself. Like it was, I was lacking some type of love for myself that I couldn't find. And 
my parent my parents did everything. My parents got a dog for for my depression. Um for but they said they labeled it for the family. It's a family dog. Mm-hmm. Um and my tics were not bad when we got the dog. However, they got worse and he got scared of me. And so it like broke my heart and I we're, we're, me and the dog aren't close anymore. <laughs> Is that the dog you have on your um, social media, the little white dog? No, the other dog is Yelly, and he's he's an eight pound Maltipu, and he's the meanest dog you'll ever meet. Um, he's he's literally he's bit everyone in our family. It's so bad. Uh, mine does that too. Yeah, we are all on the hunt for the perfect holiday gift this season, and I have the best gift that you can give yourself. You've got to check out Honey Love. Honey Love has literally revolutionized bras and shapewear. They support with no underwires, no bulky fabrics, and they're so soft you won't rush to take them off the moment you get home. Honey Love's best-selling crossover bra is so comfortable, yet a little sexy, and it's going to be your go-to for everything. Their shapewear uses targeted compression technology so you can breathe and not feel like you're stuffed in like a sausage. With Honey Love, you don't have to worry about that. You can feel comfortable and confident in whatever you're wearing, which will come in handy for all those holiday events you plan on attending. Plus, for this month only, Honey Love is giving 50% off site-wide. That's huge, you guys, 50% off. Use uh, my code that I'm going to give you in a minute, but visit honeylove.com forward slash understood to shop their November sale and let them know we sent you when the survey asks you guys, let me explain something to you. So I got two things. I got the crossover bra. I got it in white. I live in Florida. I decided I could use it as like a sports bra. I don't really wear white. Um, the second I got it, I was literally floored. Now I use it as my bra under t-shirts. I got a different color. I got that tannish color, um, to wear under t-shirts, the white one I wear under all my tennis whites. Um, and it looks like a sports bra, but it's super comfortable and it's actually quite beautiful. It has, um, flattering mesh details. It has soft removable cups. Um, you know, the light boning keeps you centered in it. I'm telling you, this is going to be your go-to bra. Like I'm not joking. Then I got, um, a shapewear piece which I don't really wear shapewear. So this is the first time I tried it. I got this super power thong. Um, it looks like, you know, a bodysuit, but it doesn't have the bra that goes with the top. So it's just working on your midsection. Um, and it, you know, is like a thong that you could put, um, that you could put on with pants or skirt or shorts or whatever. Let me tell you something. It sucked me in and it changed the shape of my body. I was floored. I've never worn anything like this. And let me tell you, I'm going to start wearing it. It was fantastic. And it didn't feel constrictive. Like, you know, sometimes those types of things do. So treat yourself to the best bras and shapewear on the market and save up to 50% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash understood this month only, you guys. I'm telling you, even think about who you might want to shop for for Christmas, because I know it might be weird maybe to be giving, you know, shapewear or bras to your family members, but it's not, it's a great gift. I would be so happy to get this. Someone can send me one. That's 50% off site-wide at honeylove.com slash understood. Inventory is limited and the sale ends soon. So don't miss their best deals of the year. After you purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them that we sent you. It's time to ditch the underwire for good. Thanks to Honey Love. I can't believe the holidays are right around the corner. I love this time of year. I love throwing a holiday get together. I always get a little stressed out, but with HelloFresh, I don't have to worry. HelloFresh delivers everything you need right to your front door to help you make an amazing holiday meal. No long lines at the market. No worrying about if you forgot that one ingredient. They take care of it all for you. Not only that, you don't have to worry about being a bad cook because you can't get it wrong with these guys. Not only that, but for the all those holiday parties, Hello Fresh Market has the perfect crowd-pleasing charcuterie boards. Oh my God, I love that. No one can resist a good cheese plate and they have amazing desserts everyone will love. You guys, I'm telling you, this is the perfect solution for having people over. It doesn't even have to be during the holidays. It could be weekends, it could be date night, it could be whatever, and it can even be for your kids. The stuff they have, tastes phenomenal and the way they present it to you so you're able to cook it and put it out is so easy it takes less than 30 minutes and i'm telling you you're gonna love it you have to try it so i've worked with green chef in the past 
um, which is now owned by HelloFresh and it with a wider array of meal plans to choose from. That's the only difference. But there's something for everyone. I love switching between the brands and now my listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount with me here at Misunderstood. So go to HelloFresh.com slash understood free and use the code understood free for free breakfast for life. I'm not kidding you guys. This is true. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash understood free, all one word, with code understood free. Don't miss out on this incredible deal from HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. Yeah, but the, the two dogs I have now, um, I brought into my life. Um, obviously, how bad my ticks are now, and um, their names are Tootsie and Fluffy. They're my favorite things ever. They give me so much serotonin and help so much with my condition that people don't understand. People think I like throw my dogs. Like it's like it's like motherhood. Like like it's like an instinct. I try telling people, I'm like, it gives me relief and calmness and makes me feel at peace when I'm holding basically my, like my dogs are my children. Like I give them everything. Right. So I'm the same way with my dogs. Um, so when you were finally diagnosed, you did not have the urge to curse yet. Correct. I mean, is that something that came later? Yes. So Cursing or corpulalia is in 10% fuck, fuck, fuck of people that have Tourette's. However, I came back from college my first semester. I think it was around like Thanksgiving time. I could be wrong. I don't know exactly what time, but I came back from college and my brothers, I lived in the basement at the time, moved their Xbox station down there. And can you imagine the things that came out of their mouth? Because I can give you a couple examples. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you give examples every day. Okay. Yeah. Yes, go on. Yes. And everyone's like, where do you get these nasty words from? I'm like, mm, my brothers, mm, my brothers, my dog is gonorrhea. <laughs> so yeah, I just want to explain to people what coprolalia, <laughs> is that how you pronounce it? Is pronounce it for me? Corpolalia? Yes. So that is the medical term used to describe the most socially stigmatizing symptoms of Tourette's syndrome is the involuntary outburst of obscene words or socially inappropriate <laughs> derogatory remarks. And as you said, only 10% of people have this. So not all people that have Tourette's are affected by this sort of cursing part of it. But I think that's a big stigma that goes along with Tourette's. If you hear someone has Tourette's, they say, oh, they have the cursing disease, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... Um, even it's just such a small percentage. Um, I, I wonder if you get this question a lot. Why is it cursing and not yelling things like you're beautiful? I love your puppy. Like, why is it always derogatory and curse words as opposed to things that are not, you know, inappropriate, let's say? Um, so I don't really have a hundred percent example for that um, or a statement to give you as an answer. However, Tourette's looks different in everyone. So vocal, vocal tics and motor tics can go into categories that are either simple or complex. And with complex vocal tics, it can be into fuck, 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 my dog is gonorrhea, multiple different words being used with simple it can be noises um it was my throat clearing sneezing very very simple simple things that can go about and just look like everything else mm -hmm. so people get caught off guard with oh Tourette's only looks like this and because that's the only thing that we're showing because mm -hmm. there's people that have very, very, very mild tics like me when I first started social media. And I didn't express that those were my tics. I didn't express in my videos that, oh, hey, I have Tourette's, but I don't really know how to show you that I have Tourette's. Um, and then there's complex, which is multiple different phrases. Go fuck yourself, scumbag. <laughs> like that. And... Anything that you hear can become a tick. Anything that you see, fuck, 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 smell the roses, can become a tick. So I have had what people would label them cute ticks, and then they become 
simple noises or very certain things that people want to hear. Like those are the things that people come up and they're like, oh my God, your condition's so cute. Okay. That's cute. It's, um, oh no. Well, um, but that's interesting what you just said, that you can develop a, ch- a tick from something that you hear. You are known for having, and we'll get to your social media in a second, but I, cause you're talking about it. You are known for a good 10 phrases, let's say, um, you know, where did you come up with some of these ticks that are more well-known that people, like you say, are coming up to you and saying they want to hear it. Can you talk about some of them? So when people come up to me and repeat my ticks, um, it's called echolalia and I will repeat it after they say it. So it's very difficult sometimes for me to go out in public and me meet someone and then I have to explain to them, hey, let's not repeat my fuck, fuck, fuck ticks because I'm going to say them. So it's setting my it's setting my condition off. It's like setting like someone's epilepsy off, oh, wow. like doing okay. it almost purposely without knowing that it's purposeful. So. Um, whenever I talk about my ticks, it sets my ticks off. However, there has been some of them that I get directly from social media. Um, I don't want to say specifically, but at least 60% of them are from social media. The other half um, are from things my family has said, things random people in a dollar general line in front of me have said. Um, <laughs> there's They're so random. They're like, and people think that it's like, I'm like thinking of it. Um, it's like, it's like I'm fat ass, that tick specifically. People think that I'm calling them that, like purpose. Like my sister one time was like, you're making me insecure. I'm like, I don't like what? I was like, what? I was, I couldn't like even believe what like she said, because I don't mean any of the things they say. They're just things well, that I hear. That's such a um, good point because my daughter, I asked her if she had any questions for me, for you. And her specific question was, has anyone ever gotten upset by what you said and thought that they meant it for them? Like you just explained that you don't mean it like that. Or like, are some of these things that you're expressing things that are inside your head that just come out because you're really thinking them? Or is that just a misconception about it as well? So it's not that I'm like thinking about them. However, there has been times where like, for example, there was a blow up rocket wiener. There is a blow up rocket ship for Halloween rocket wiener um, like that um, across the street. And Colin was like, where my boyfriend, he was like, where did you, where are you seeing rock, rocket wiener? Where, he says, where are you seeing rockets? And I said, rocket wiener right over there. Like that house has one blown up right there. And he was like, oh, my God. So they can literally come from. I was like, yes, they can literally come from absolutely anything. And Mm -hmm. it's so it's so mind boggling because I literally don't mean anything I say. Fat ass. Right. Right. Um, But it can literally pick be picked up from like the most random conversation. Like my mom was saying, oh, we don't say this word. We say another. we say this word instead. And then I just kept saying the word that she told me not to say. So like my my brothers are very, very um, immature and say a lot of disgusting things. And my mom gets very, very upset at them because they're because whenever I'm home, she's like, just watch yourself because have respect for your sister, because anything that you say, she can pick up. And then you're going to go to school and you're going to hear about how your sister said this. And then you don't want to talk about it. And you're going to be like, yeah, that's from me. Like, Right. Right. So how did you get through school and through college? Did you have to talk to your teachers and explain um, what you had and that you might have an outburst in class? Like, how did you get through that? And, you know, I also want to hear second part of that question, you know, I've seen a lot on your Instagram that people accuse you of faking it. Did your teachers, you know, sometimes give you a hard time because even people in levels of authority don't necessarily believe young kids and why they're acting out? Okay. I love this question. Um, uh, so when I was in high school, um, when my tics were very, very mild for around sophomore, junior year, um, it was right before it was probably like five months before COVID. And then we were told that, oh my God, we're going on a week break for COVID. It turned out to be two years. So I went virtual 
for two years, and it was the biggest lifesaver of lifesavers. However, I was going to graduation. I hated myself for those two years. I did therapy three to four times a week to look at myself in the mirror because <gasps> I fucked your dad. Mm, mm, mm. Tippy tippy top that wiener tap rotisserie chicken because I didn't like the way I looked when I ticked. Um, and that's something I also still struggle with with social media. And people are like, why are your ticks so bad? And I'm like, because I get so anxious, like looking at myself and being like, okay, I got I got to delete that. Like I go through my videos and delete all of like, I go, whatever, that's a different topic for a different day. But However, wait, on that topic, Balin, you know that all people do that, right? That's very normal. Yes. My daughter yeah. from women I know uh, are self-conscious -con -con and they will do a thing for TikTok or, you know, with their social media and they will hate how they look and erase it. And I do the same thing. I don't really do a lot of stuff on social media besides post my podcast, but it's, it is not something that you should feel like you are different about. You know that, right? Yes. And it, it's, it, it was definitely a mind block between those two years of COVID because of how bad my tics became. They were, I was, I was, my parents were feeding me because I would throw forks at them. Did I mean to throw forks at them? No. I threw forks in the wall. I threw salsa containers. I was throwing everything in reach. I wasn't allowed to be in the kitchen. I wasn't allowed to make food. Um, <clears throat> I forget the question. Oh yeah. Well, me too now, but, but <laughs> yeah, I guess, well, on that topic though, like, did you feel angry? Is that why you were throwing? Like explain what it feels like to have a tick so that people that don't know what that's like um, can understand. I've heard that it's equated to sneezing. Yes. So a tick is a pre-monetary urge. It's something that you feel. Um, so for example, the way I like to explain it is telling someone not to blink, try not blinking. And you're going to sit there and you're going to hold it in and you're going to focus on not blinking. However, you want to blink. You have to blink. And then by the time that you blink, your eyes are going to be watering and you're going to have to blink four more times. And that's what it feels like to hold in a tick is it's very uncomfortable. And I never felt angry with myself. Um, I never felt angry with my tics. Um, oh, no, but like I if you were throwing things at your parents, was it because you were angry with them or it was just something your body was involuntarily doing? It was, it was the, I had the urge to do it and it gets, gets really hard to talk about because, um, People think that I can stop myself from doing it, which I would, I know before I'm going to tick. So I'll be like, mom, I need to throw this fork and she'll be like, okay. And they would move out of the way or blank, blank and blank. There's been things like I picked up a jar of sprinkles one time and I shook the entire thing. Why <laughs> up? And I felt very, very bad afterwards because they were just like, just don't clean it up. Just, just stay right there. Just don't clean it up because I would pick it up and do it again and again. Right. So and, it just, and speaking of, go ahead. It, it's not anger towards anyone. However, when I hit myself, um, it, it, it's out of something I, I feel the urge to hurt myself, but I would never hurt anyone else. So over the summer, I picked up a knife and I tried stabbing myself in the back with the knife. This was during a family occasion and everyone was scared to take the knife away from me because they all thought that I was going to hurt them when really in reality, I was going to slice half my side off. Um... So, and I would do it. I would have done it and I would have done it two more times because that's how bad my OCD is as well. Yeah. So let's talk about your OCD. Um, so OCD is something that you have to do in, in repetitive stages of three. Am I correct about that? Yes. So OCD is obsessive compulsive disorder. So for people who don't know that it's when obsessive thoughts turn into compulsions and those compulsions 
can be very intense. So when people say, oh my God, I'm so OCD, I have OCD, uh, blank, blank, and blank, use it as an adjective, I get offended because it is paralyzing. If Mm -hmm. I have been late for things, I have been not able to get out of the shower because I slammed the, my head on the on the shower wall so many times until it feels right. Until I'm like, okay, the feeling, my, the, the urge of me slamming myself, my head against the wall is gone. Then I'm like, okay, I can, I can get out. And I did that one time and I did it 36 times. Mm, And I got out and I collapsed on the ground and everyone was sleeping in my house. And I had to tell my parents the next morning and they were like, you got to start wearing a bathing suit. And I was like, okay. And I had to shower in my parents' room because it it got so intense and so bad. And the last thing that I want is to anyone see me without a bathing suit on if something like that happens. (laughs) Right. Well, I guess I can understand that. Um, But that's got to be, so not everyone that has uh, Tourette's has OCD. But it sounds like, you know, it's between I think it says something like 30 and 50 people, 30 and 50 percent of Mm -hmm. um, people that have Tourette's have OCD as well. Um, I think that that's correct. Um, So is there a cure? Is there medication for something like this? Your Tourette's we're talking about. Uh, It's for the Tourette's, for the ticks. I have. um, I've been on medication. I've probably been on three or four different medications. Um, however, one of them made me gain 30 pounds in two months and made me feel like a zombie. Oh, wow. um, it, helped, it helped my tics a lot. However, it didn't help me mentally. Um, the next one I was on, I, uh, I, 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 I didn't feel anything. Um, it didn't do anything. It just made me not want to eat anything. So that didn't work out. And then I went back to the old medicine that helped my tics, but I was put on a lower dosage. And then I stopped taking that and I went to a different medicine, which I have not talked about on social media. I took it for a day. I took it the night before I went to bed and I woke up next day and I took it and I didn't feel like myself. Um, I I was very, very, I was in the deepest hole that I have ever been in in my entire life. Um, I don't really want to get into it a lot. However, it was, it was bad. It was really, really bad for that one day. My mom was like, we're getting off this medicine. Like, do not yeah. take Okay, it. so you so. stopped taking it. So, so do they say that there's a cure for this? I mean, I did read in researching um, Tourette's syndrome and you that with age, it can completely disappear in some cases or um, get better. What are your thoughts on your prognosis? So when I was diagnosed at the Mayo Clinic, she looked at me and she was like, I have hope for you. Like, um, I see thousands of people with Tourette's and it gets better over time. However, it's a chronic condition and it doesn't completely go away. So it would come back in like stressful situations or like when you're really excited or when you have anxiety or like certain situations like that, you will most likely always have a tick or always tick in some way, shape or form. Um, however, it is supposed to get better with age. And I'm hoping that by the time that I want kids or have kids that it does get better. There is also a brain surgery that you can get that is used for Parkinson's, but Tourette's patients have been starting to use it for research basically as like a lab rat, Mm -hmm. which I refuse to do. And I don't know what it's, I don't know what it's called actually deep brain stimulation surgery. Okay. Um, they like drill a hole in the top of your head. And there is a guy who went on the news about it and he like controlled um, almost like his, how bad his ticks were going to be through his phone, through like the level of the thing in his brain. It was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It was oh, wow. super cool. His ticks have went from like, really, really bad to like 70% improvement. So it was crazy to see um, and read about and watch his life go from this to this in a matter of seconds. 
it was insane and props to him because I would never do that. Yeah. I would never. Yeah. Um, do you, do you try to do some things that help you suppress the ticks? I mean, do you try to stay in certain situations or stay away from certain situations or is there a physical thing that you do, um, to suppress the ticks or at this point in your life, are you confident enough and it feels good to you? Like you need to do it. Like, where are you at with that? I'd say a little bit of everything. There's definitely some things that I do to help. Like, for example, I take deltas. If you don't know what delta is, it's basically like a tea, a tea chase, a THC infused like gummy. Okay. Um, and THC helps tremendously. I don't tick. Like I do not tick at all. It's like amazing the fact that I can like I do it to go to Top Golf. I love Top Golf. It's my favorite activity to do. However, mm -hmm. I don't want to throw a club at anyone. So I take a specific amount of dosage to go there. And people have actually reached out to me and been like, "You faker! I saw you at Top Golf. Like you didn't tick." And I was like, "Cause I was high." Like, <laughs> like <laughs> there's just things like that. Um. I, the more exercise you do, um, the more focused your brain is in the, like your ticks go away. So like when I go down to the gym, I work out three to five times a day, three to five times a week. Sorry, not a day. <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, the more inflammatory foods that you eat, because Tourette's syndrome is an inflammatory condition, it's inflammatory syndrome, whatever. And the more foods you eat that have inflammation in them makes your tics worse. So like caffeine. I drink caffeine though, but that's a good example because it makes my tics really bad. However, I drink it. Um, what about What about alcohol? Oh yeah, really bad really bad. So every time I drink, I have to take it, have to take THC every time I drink, it makes them skyrocketly horrible. Like I can't even leave the house. I'd be smashing my head off this table multiple right. times. Wow. Wow. Um, so where do you live now? You're done with, are you done with college? Yes. Yeah, so actually back to the other topic we talked about before I lost track, I had to drop out of college because oh. of how bad my ticks were. So I finished half a sophomore year and I uh, called it quits because I had to teach myself everything. I would go into class with headphones in because um, the teachers, like the, all the teachers announced that I had Tourette's before the beginning of the year. Oh, so right. That was my question. How did the teachers? Yeah. 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 So every kid knew that I had Tourette's. However, it made me very, very uncomfortable because if I had a good tick day, the people next to me would be like, oh my God, you're doing so well. And they'd point it out. They would point out my tics, which makes my condition worse. They'd be like, you know, I've never heard that one before. And I'd mm. be like, me either. Like, what do you want me to say? It made me so uncomfortable and I didn't want to talk to anyone. And no one ever laughed because in college, you're a little bit more mature. But also um, she said that she would... Um, like give you an F on like the exam or something if like you laughed or something like that because it just wasn't tolerated in like the certain classrooms that I was in and everyone was very, very respectful. Um, and I really did appreciate that. However, the teachers would pause every time I ticked. So it just became like almost inconvenient to bring it up and then like try to pretend like it's not there, but then act like it's there. And I contacted the nursing program. I was a, I was a nursing student, um, or becoming a nursing major, whatever you want to call it. Um, and one of the, um, basic nursing classes I was in the teacher after I was on Dr. Phil, there was an article that WVU, I went to West Virginia university, um, wrote about me and my nursing instructor, um, through Zoom, there were like 120 kids in the Zoom call. And she she said, Malin, can you unmute yourself? I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, I'm going to need to talk to you after class. Is that okay? And I said, yes, ma'am. So we wait till after class. And she goes, I read that article. She goes, you got the whole nursing program talking about you. I said, what do you mean? 
She goes, we've had meetings. She goes, we just don't know how you're going to be a nurse. I said, mm, okay. I said, um, like every other nursing staff. And she was like, well, I have faith in you. I, I have faith in you. But however, you're going to need to cut the, the bad words out if you want to be a nurse at WVU. And oh I said, God. I said, hmm. And then I went to the head of the nursing board at WVU and I, I contacted him. I said, this is your teacher. This is a nurse working for you. Okay. That doesn't think I can be a nurse. I said, let me tell you something respectfully. I have went and gotten two COVID tests by your nursing students here. And not one of them have been able to give me a COVID test. They said, if they said, we can't, we can't, we can't give her a COVID test. We can't do it. If you want to give yourself a COVID test, you can give yourself a COVID test. I said, epic. And then I went to go get blood work done. And neither of the nursing students could give me blood work. I said, that is your nursing staff, not mine. So you could give you, you the test and the blood work because they were nervous to touch you or because they couldn't fit, like they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't know how to treat someone with Tourette's. Right. Right. But, right. you know, and they the, can't have a student with Tourette's to, to be a nurse. Right. They just And, and that that's what I want to get into, too, because I think that that is so interesting that so many people do not understand this disease. Is it considered a disease? Is that the right word? I don't know. I would say syndrome. Syndrome. OK, so it's it's so interesting that so many people, even in the medical community, don't know how to do it and they t treat you like a kid, you know, like like you're a doll almost and they don't want to be responsible for it. I mean, I did read those. I saw the Dr. Phil. I read the article that you're talking about as well. And they were, you know, putting you on a pedestal. They were, you know, it was talking oh, about how wonderful yeah. your life can be and what the syndrome is and um how you've risen above and you've created a platform for people and i think it's just terrible that um that someone would take dreams away from you and we'll get into that also um in a second but so you said you left college so where are you living now who are you living with so I go back and forth. My parents live in West Virginia and my boyfriend lives in D.C. So I go back and forth from his place to my parents. Um, so I'll stay with him for like a month, two months, and I'll go visit my parents and I'll come back type of thing because I have doctors in both places. I have appointments in both places. I have a lot of things going on in both places. So it's just inconvenient to not go back to either place basically okay so let's talk about your boyfriend for a minute because he has become you know a little social media famous whatever you guys call it um from from participating in a lot of your posts Nick, um, i forwarded one of the um shows kind of that you guys did together not a show but like a little clip of <laughs> how you guys met and um how you know, he has interacted in your life, how you interact in his. And I've sent it to some people and, a, and it brought them to tears because he's just the greatest guy. And you, if somebody is not watching this on YouTube and they're just listening, you're you're a gorgeous girl um, with all sorts of confidence and um, humor and love. And the two of you together are like the perfect match. So I, you know, talk to us about how um, you met him and how he first contacted you. Okay. Yes. So me and my boyfriend met, met through a social media dating app. Um, my, my mom was like, being on, you need to not find guys through dating apps. So I tried not searching. I tried not searching. And then I got made fun of a lot when I didn't try searching people. Well, I would like go out to places and guys would like, think it's like a joke to downgrade me because I have Tourette's. Right. right. I'm like, listen, dude, are you looking in the mirror? Because but however right me, and dating is so hard anyway so i can't imagine um oh. how it is when you have something that you have to like share and by the way i have something that i have to share with people wh when i date them and uh you know about my past and who, things that i've done not. in my past you're and not. it's very interesting that i um you know i feel like sometimes people need to 
um, be told about it before I meet them. Otherwise, they think I'm lying to them. And I wonder if that's something that has happened to you as well. I mean, I think it's great that you um, you put it on your social media, right? That I have Tourette's? Yeah. Yes. Not your social media. Sorry, on your dating social. Yes. Yeah. So I got tons and tons when I, before I met Colin, um, tons of hate. People, I would say something that it was on hinge. It was like a question. It was like something you don't know about me or mm -hmm. something you don't see about me in these pictures. And it was, I have Tourette syndrome mm -hmm. and people, guys would respond back. Oh, like I could F the ticks out of you. Like just gross, Terrible. gross, gross things. Um, People would comment, oh, you're a 11 out of 10, but your ticks make you a negative six. Like go F yourself. Like all this stuff. Like, it's just, it was horrible. Like I didn't want anything to do with anything. Um, I felt like I was hard to love because of the condition I had. And my mom was always like, the, the person's going to come. That's going to treat you the best and blank, blank and blank. And I was like, mom, just stop. Like, just stop. Because I just couldn't even think about it at that moment. I went on like maybe four dates before I met Colin. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. How did that go? Terrible. Some guy told me, quote unquote, forbatum. He goes, I'm actually a medical student. I said, that's amazing. Congratulations. Like, that's so cool. My my uncle's a general surgeon. He goes, yes, I'm going, I'm in, I'm going to be a neurologist. I actually am going to go to um, whatever fucking school to become a neuro, neurosurgeon. I said, that's amazing. He goes, quote unquote, forbatum to fix people like you. I said, okay, nice to meet you, Michael. Have a good one. <laughs> I don't like the name Mike. Yeah. So yeah, that was, is, that was, is that where you got that tick from? No, it just happened to be, it just happened to be the same thing. So oh. I, that's another story, but yeah, that was, that was one of the, that was, that was one of the instances that happened. And I called my mom afterwards and then he didn't make it any better after we left. He did not make it any better. He was like, do you care if I give you the ride home? I said, yeah, sure. Because I Ubered there. Because I was like, this guy is not seeing, this guy doesn't even know where I live. Uh-uh. So mm -hmm. I had him drop. We're in the car. I said, do you know how to get to my location? He goes, yeah, of course. I said, okay, takes three wrong turns. I said, dude, where are you going? He goes, I'm kidnapping you. I said, I said, what? He goes, no, I'm just kidding. I said, okay. I had him drop me off five houses down from where I lived and I walked back. Well, was, all right. Well, that guy sounds terrible. But by the way, that also is very normal for just dating yeah. on a dating app because guys yeah. sometimes suck and it takes finding a diamond in a haystack. So it sounds like you did. All right. So you met, what is his name? Colin, you said? Colin. Yes. I met Colin through the dating app and mm -hmm. we, I actually went on my first date with him with my best friend because she got stood up the day before and he was going to invite someone, but the guy was too busy. So he was like, I don't care if she comes like whatever. It's not that big of a deal. And she said that she didn't feel like she was third wheeling. He was very, very nice all around. We have a lot in common. Um, the only the only thing that when I post him on social media, this might be a thing with all girls. It definitely is with all girls. I wanted to show his arm. That's the only thing that I wanted people to see. And then I was like this because he's a very attractive man. I love him. He is. I love him. And then every girl on social media that comes from my page that doesn't follow me follows him. I'm right. like, get out of here. I'm like, get out of here. That's so, that's a girl thing. That also yeah. is just all the girls want your man. They'll say all the reasons why he should be with them instead of you, right? Yeah, he'll get like DMs and I'll be like, if I, 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 we'll just laugh. <laughs> we'll just laugh at the DMs because he, he gets the strangest ones and I get some strange ones, but these girls, like they're girling. Right. But, well, that, that is normal. I think, unfortunately for the both of you, but I think yeah. it's great that, um, that you guys can laugh about it. So what would you say is the best thing about Colin? The way that he treats me. Um, I've never been treated any better. 
and I've I've been in a four year relationship before him, um, and I've never had a friendship as strong as ours, um, a bond as strong as ours. Um, we're like a team. We call ourselves a team. Um, I don't know. I. What would he say is the What would he say is the best thing about you? He says my heart. He says that he's never met someone that goes to the store and buys everything for everyone else, but doesn't think of herself. I, I'm very, very selfless. Um, and he says it multiple times to multiple people. He goes, I would start worrying if you stopped doing that, if you stopped thinking about others or stopped like caring about others um he's mentioned it multiple times that he that i have the biggest heart that he's ever met <laughs> oh well it is true and you guys are just unbelievably beautiful together so i love it um okay so talk to me about your social media platform you said you had tiktok before um covid before you know you made your platform about tourettes now for people that don't know who you are on social media you have a platform that is basically about bringing awareness to your syndrome and to Tourette's um, a little bit about OCD or do you not talk about your OCD on there as much? I I do talk about my OCD and I do talk about other issues um, that I go through consistently. However, um, there are certain things I don't like to touch base on in my life. I like to just keep those things sacred to me mm -hmm. um, and to the people that are close to me the most. Um, however, my social media platform, I share Tourette's and I share my life and how I live with it, not how Susan down the street or your cousin and a half and your best friend live with it. Because Tourette's and every condition that everyone has or every struggle that everyone has looks different in everyone. And so my page is built off of my specific journey, but also trying to educate as much as possible to everyone, whether you're 95 or five years old, I feel like you could learn something from it. Mm -hmm. um, I've been in stores and there's been little girls that come up four or five years old with their moms and they're like, you've helped my girls so much. There's a kid in her class, a kid in her preschool and her mom has Tourette's. There has been times where I have, when I went to Nashville for my 21st birthday, I met this, this family of this boy who is getting diagnosed with Tourette's that I'm still in contact with. Um, I think he just turned 12 um, and he's going into middle school as that goes horrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, make sure that I touch base for every generation, every type of person. Because if I feel that a five-year-old can know how Tourette's is, my six-year-old brother learned what Tourette's was, not easily. Again, there was a lot that came with it. If he can learn, then a 95-year-old woman can learn. And it's very difficult when I go out in public, the stares that I get from older people versus kids my kids my age maybe younger they'll video me right there just video me right there make fun of me laugh however an older woman will come up and ask me if i'm on drugs and i'll right. be like okay um so that's how it fluctuates with people just not knowing what is going on. Like the other day I was in Target and this these group of, I would say middle schoolers, maybe six years, maybe sixth grade, seventh grade, they were mocking me behind me when I was checking out. And I decided to leave the checkout line and go over to them. And I said, do you think bullying is acceptable? And they said, what do you mean? I said, I have a neurological chronic condition called Tourette's. Do you think that is it acceptable to bully people? What I know did they what say? I, I said. I know what school you guys go to. I didn't know what school these guys went to. I had no idea, but I said I did, and they got straight faced. They got scared, and I said, 
For further reference, if you guys want to bully someone, just remember that you wouldn't want it done to you. You wouldn't want someone coming up to you and telling you your hair looks bad or your breath smells or, you know what, you should have probably wore better jeans, say those ones don't look good on you. Like, it's the same thing. I can't help that w what what I do in public. However, you guys have fun laughing. You guys have fun making fun of me because karma is not fun. Right. And it's so hard, you know, just growing up in general um, and all the things that go along with that from dating, getting through school, dealing with bullying um, because you look a little bit different or because people are just jealous. Um, and, you know, also <coughs> then to add on top of it, having Tourette's, it's just got to make it absolutely, um, you know, that much harder for you to deal with. And I think you creating this platform for people to really understand it instead of be scared of it, be misinformed about it um, has been such a, a saving grace probably for you, but also for people that follow you. Because I think, um, you know, it's a, it's a syndrome that not a lot of people have come in contact with in a way where they get questions answered. And I think what you're doing is phenomenal. Um, so I want to ask you a couple questions around that. Like, what are the most common comments that you've been getting in your DMs now that you have such a big platform? Let's talk about the negatives first. What are those like? Go kill yourself. I can't believe that you're faking this condition. So many people actually have it. Um, I was stalked. The police had to come to my house. Um, they were sending me pictures of my house. I'm going to burn your house down, you stupid slut. Like, go. I get death threats to, I hope your mom gets cancer, to go rot in hell. Your soul belongs in the deepest pit there is. Your boyfriend doesn't just, your boyfriend um, is so lame. Like, all his other stuff. Does he know who he's dating? Um, the But those don't really, like, those don't really like, affect me. I'm like, oh my God, wow. Like you're telling me you're going to burn my house down. Cool. Do what? I dare ya. <laughs> like the one comment that I don't think people mean it to be mean, but it impacts me so, so much that I don't talk about that I've made videos about and deleted them and made videos about and deleted them over and over again because I get told just to let it go by my family, by my friends, by my boyfriend, is the comment that they're so patient. He's so patient. Your friends are so patient. Like I'm so like hard to love. Like I'm so like, I don't, it's like, I don't deserve a boyfriend. I don't deserve family that cares about me that are supportive. And I don't deserve friends when I hear that comment. Right. It, like you're a burden. Yes. It reminds me of like someone who's never had a struggle. Like mm -hmm. imagine if I went up to someone who was in a wheelchair and was like, you know what? You're so glad you must be so grateful to have parents that are so patient with you. What? Yeah. That's yeah. so sad and disheartening and would and would be devastating to anyone to hear that in general, whether they had a disability, a condition, anything, just to hear, you know what, you're, those people must be so patient to deal with you. Right. That's what I hear in the back of my head. And it's constant. It's under every post is my friends have gotten DMs. Oh my God, please stay friends with Balin. Like she needs friends. She deserves friends. That's terrible, Balin. But I mean, I get what you're saying that that is so hurtful. But also, if you really think about where that's coming from, it's people's ignorance. It's they are oh, they no, just don't know what they're saying. And they don't know that, by the way, this does not define you. Um, mm -hmm. You you can do and be anyone you want. Um, I mean, ha like, have you gotten yeah, to the part, part where you know that you're not defined by this? Do I know? I'm sorry, I was ticking. That's oh, yeah, a hundred percent. I don't think Tourette's is makes me who I am. Mm. i I don't believe that. I'm Balin regardless I have with a with Tourette's or without Tourette's. I'm mm. Balin if I had a different condition or not. I'm Balin if I didn't have a condition. Mm. Um, however, it took me a long time to realize that, um that, again, that's what I went to therapy multiple, multiple times because I blame myself 
a lot for my condition. When I was 12 years old, this is going to make me cry. When I was 12 years old, me and my parents, me and my mom specifically were in my uh, doctor's office. And this kid was making this like a multiple noises and they were repetitive. And I was like, mom, what is wrong with him? Like being like a 12 years old, not knowing anything, not saying anything. I didn't look at him weird. I didn't say anything rude about him. I just looked at my mom. I said, mom, what's wrong with him? She goes, Bailey, he has ticks. And now here I am nine years later with Tourette's. And there's been a time where I was like, mom, like God, God gave me this because I said that about that kid. My mom was like, Balin, you got to stop blaming yourself. You can't do anything about it. You were, you were a child. You didn't know anything like blank, blank and blank. But I blame myself a lot, especially with my cussing um, because of how religious I am and um, how I cannot belong to a church. I don't feel um, like I'm ready to go to church. I get asked that question a lot. Oh my God, I would pay to see her in a church. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Um, I went to I went to church before I cussed, and it was fine. It was normal. Um, mm-hmm. It was just like church. No one even looked at me. No one looked at me. No one cared. The preacher knew I had Tourette's, but. I have been told that I am a demon because I have Tourette's and that I'm possessed and that I need to go get an exorcism. People have given me actual locations in Egypt to go get an exorcism done. I'm being dead serious. Um, Again, that all stems from from ignorance and fear that that people have. You've talked a lot about misconceptions that people have about the syndrome. I mean, there's obviously a ton of them. I want to ask you what, I I think a lot of times people don't know if they should laugh, if they should think you're faking it, if they should stare, if they should do something to help you. So I want to ask somebody that has it, what can people do um, when you're ticking, when you're in their presence, how should we handle it um, that makes you feel better and comfortable? So there has been multiple different situations where, I mean, obviously some of the things I say are very funny and I agree with that. And I think it's appropriate to laugh fuck, 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 in certain situations. However, it's also not appropriate to laugh in other situations. Um, I don't really think it's appropriate when I'm in a target and I'm ticking and someone five rows down from me is doing the same thing as me. It's setting my ticks off. And then I have to go approach them and then be like, oh, my God, I love you. You're on TikTok. I'm like, that's great. But you're mocking me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, we're not. I'm like, yes, you are. And you don't even know it. I'm not here to be like, oh, like, F you, like, shame on you. Like, you're a horrible person. I'm just here to let you know that that's mocking. You're mocking my condition. Mm-hmm. And I don't I don't think that's funny. Um, it doesn't make my condition any better. Um, it actually gives me more anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't like being stared at. It's very, very rude to be stared to be stared at. I get it. And I understand, oh my God, where did that screaming, that cussing come from? Oh, that girl right there that has something wrong with her. And then it's like, it should go away. It's like, are you going to stare at a mom that has a screaming baby when obviously she's struggling and she doesn't want the baby to be screaming in church or in a quiet situation. So let's keep staring at her like Mm -hmm. that. It's just, it just creates more anxiety for me. It doesn't make me want to go out. However, I'm not going to let someone stare at me be the issue of all issues. Like, I don't care at that point. Like, I have nothing to convince of anyone of my condition. Um, it is how it is, and that's how I've laid it out. Um, however, the most appropriate way when I'm just meeting you or I'm just meeting someone, fucking your dad, <laughs> is to pretend like it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Um, and necessarily I've gotten asked questions like, do I still talk over you? I'm like, yeah, it just like, it doesn't bother me if you talk over me. I might ask you to repeat it because I can't like hear it. But other than that, like there's, there's times where me and my boyfriend have actually cried laughing. Like the other day at a restaurant, like me and me and my family have died. You're bald. Like, cause my, I'm thinking of my dad right now. My dad is bald. You're bald. So Yes, that is where one of them came from. 
Yes. But there has been like when that happens, like my dad will be like when I come home from D.C., he'll be like, so good to see you, Balin. And like joke around. He's like my favorite words to hear. So it's just it's good to have you home, like just right. certain things like that. Um, but I mean, there's a right and a wrong time for everything. Um, if I'm slamming my head off the table, I mean, I really don't think that's I'm not acting. I'm not acting. I don't think that's funny. And then people stare at me and it makes it worse, makes it really, really worse because it happens in the most stressful environments, like going out to eat. Like my mom has had to say multiple things, multiple different people, because I don't deal. I don't do. Um, what is the word? I say it all the time. Confrontation. Yeah. No, I can't do it. I won't say anything. I'll literally just walk out and continue with my day, pretend like nothing happens. And the people that I like, my boyfriend, my friends, my family, my sister almost hit someone at bingo because of it. Like they just don't tolerate it. And then me, I'm just like put up with it because it happens everywhere I go. Like someone's always going to say something. Someone's always going to look. Someone's always going to do something. There have been times where I purposely go out and just pretend like I don't have ticks. Like I'll just like hold them all in and then I'll come back and I will tick so bad. It'll last like four hours straight and I'll go to bed at eight o'clock at night. So and people I, have a, I have a question about that. When you sleep, can you get through the night or do you wake up ticking? Um, there's been times where I have, um, I'm on medicine now for, um, my insomnia and my mood disorder, which helps me sleep because I've been on medication before for um, not getting enough sleep because of my tics. And my mom did like an experiment because I was like, mom, like I'm getting the worst sleep ever. She made me sleep in her bed. And my dad slept in like another room and I was ticking in my sleep. And I had no idea. Like yeah. I, I had no idea. I would like wake myself up. Like sometimes there was one time I woke myself up because I was trying to suffocate myself in the pillow from, from ticking. But other than that, that was the only time I've ever woken up from a tick. Wow. Wow. Um, so your platform has made you big enough that you, uh, were able to collaborate with the musician Jax. How did that come about? Oh my gosh. I love Jax. Okay. I love so, her. so it has happened we tried planning this last year where I go out to LA and like blank, blank and blank. However, flying with my condition is not the easiest thing to do. I take, um, a very, very high sedative to go to sleep and not wake up on the plane. Um, it just makes me more comfortable than trying to either pay attention to everyone else on the plane and what everyone else is doing based off of my tics. So I take sleep pills. However, they want me to be there for two days. And I was like, that's a lot. Like the sedative takes like 24 hours to like completely wear off. So for me to get there and film, I'd be like this, I'd be like half asleep. It would have been terrible. So I was like, let's just do it another time. And then they were in Baltimore, so Columbia, somewhere in Maryland and right out of DC. Cause I live in the DMV area with Colin and it was like 45 minutes and Jax was like, we're going to be here. Can you guys make it? And I said, uh, yeah. And I met big time rush too. It's like, what a two in one. She's awesome. Her yeah. and her fiance are awesome. I got invited to go to their wedding, which me and Colin are trying to figure out a way to get there. However, I'm, I don't really know how it's going to work. Um, but we're trying, but she is the sweetest soul ever. Her brother actually lives in this area and we're friends with him. So we're connected in the family. I love that. But how did she even reach out to you? How'd you guys get connected? She followed me on TikTok. We followed each other back on TikTok and her management reached out to me. It was like, oh my God, we could, we would love to like create a song about Tourette's syndrome or like something like that. It's so She's so talented. She's so, so talented. So Taylor. talented. So talented. Another um, talented musician, Billie Eilish. She's spoken up about having... Um, been diagnosed with Tourette's when she was 11. Did you know that about her? Have you reached out to her on Instagram at all? I have not reached out to her. However, I have known that she has had Tourette's syndrome the longest. Um, there's some other ones. Seth Rogen, I also mm -hmm. saw has Tourette's, which I don't think anyone knew either. Um, I mean, I didn't know Billie Eilish did until I was researching um, Tourette's. So I think it's really um, interesting that 
you know, people, you know, it's, it's not that uncommon is the, is the point of that. Um, what is a day in the life like for you right now? Okay. So I just got a puppy. So, um, the less sleep I get, the worse my ticks are. So they haven't been the best. However, when I'm talking, um, as you can tell, um, when I'm focused, my ticks subside. Mm -hmm. Um, however, um, I've been, first thing is the dogs. My number one thing is the dogs. I take them out, feed them. My puppy's also very sick. So I have to give her, um, consistent medicine. Um, I like to work out for about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on how long my workout is. Um, I make breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so I'm always making something. I'm always baking something. Um, I like to go on walks. So usually after I go to the gym, I'll have like breakfast or whatever time I go, I'll cook and I'll be like, okay, I'll go take the dogs for the walk or I'll take care of them. And my boyfriend gets off of work. He works, he works 12 hours. It's ridiculous. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, and then he'll, he'll come back and we'll kind of just do whatever, but it's kind of just like. It's kind of just laid back. Um, I'm trying to think what else, what else I do. I try to keep. What kind of things do you like to do? Do you like to go to movies? Do you watch a lot of Netflix? Like what, who are you besides the girl we see on Instagram? um, I play Wii. Oh, like the. Oh yeah. Like like tennis. Like 2011. Yes. I have it right over there. Me and Colin play competitive Wii. Yes. Um, I. (laughs) Um, but I love to be as active as possible. Do you have a job right now? Are you looking to work at some point? Like what, what, what do you see your future being? So I'm trying to buy a place to rent out for Airbnbs. That's currently what my goal is for 2024, 2025 type of thing. Um, I do social media now full time. However, I don't talk about it because people think that um, I'm a nobody that just scrums off people to get whatever. It's just people don't know that I actually do social media full time. Um, So that is currently my job for right now. And I couldn't meaning you've monetized your content and you're doing stuff like that, or you mean people are hiring you to help them with their content? I monetize my content. Oh my god, this feels so weird to talk about. I've never talked about it. Oh, sorry. Can we talk? No, you're no, you're fine. I just don't know how people react. But that's what all influencers do. That's what you should be doing. You are an influencer. Why not make money off of it? That's great. And another idea for you, Balin, is that people can hire you to help them with their content because your content is so good. Like I would hire you to help me with my content. You know, I think anyone um, could use someone like you that really knows your generation, what people are doing on TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. Snapchat. I don't even know how to use that. My daughter made me sign up for it last night because she wants to have some Snapchat thing where you go, you know what I'm talking about, right? Where you go like a hundred days yeah, and you snap each other. Yeah. So I dumb. She, I'm like, does my face have to be in it? She's like, no, it could be the ceiling. I'm like, Wyatt, this is so stupid, but she's so into doing this. Anyway, I think that would be a great job for you where people could hire you to help with content. For sure. That's, I didn't know that that was, I didn't know that that was a job. However, I do do social media full time and I'm trying to save money to do Airbnbs and I want to own my own business. So I've been trying to work on merch and all of that stuff on the back burner. And I want to open again, like a coffee smoothie place. Cause those are my favorite things to ever do and go explore. I'll literally sit there like, there's a coffee place really close to um, Collins and I'll just go there and I'll sit there for hours and color with my dogs. So oh, I love that. I love that for you. I think that's a great idea. So my last question then is one more about your social media. Um, how do you come up with the content? Is it based on what you're going through that day, that week? How often are you coming up with content? Um, explain your, how you do your social media. So I do it very correct. 
random. I'm going to say that because I don't know how to say the other word. Mm -hmm. um, I I really like to, again, uh, bake and make every meal that I do. So those are that's um, something that I like to share because it's something that I also struggle with because it's very, very hard to do. And it takes me a long, long time. And I also like to make content um, that's just based off of random things as well, because I like to make my platform some kind of just random, mm -hmm. just the most random things you could probably think of, because I also think that I don't want to post videos being the girl with Tourette's because I think I'm also more than that. So there's other things in my life that I want to share, like my dogs. I like to share my dogs. I like to share my outfits. Um, I'm not really into makeup. However, I try to be. I really mm -hmm. try to be. Um, but I also am a girl that wears sweatpants and hoodies every day, all day. That's everything I wear. And I try to incorporate that without incorporating that. Like people, specifically guys will be like, you stop wearing baggy clothes. I'll be like, no, no, who are you to tell me what to wear? I'm gonna wear this. And I like to make content with my boyfriend. Um, I really like that he likes to be involved with my social media because I mean, social media is my life. It has turned into my job and my life because I cannot work a nine to five. I've tried working jobs. I've tried going to school. I can't sit through a lecture hall class. I can't serve people food. I can't bus people. I can't Uber. I can't be an Uber. Um, just certain things like that. So it's probably the biggest blessing in my life that I have the opportunity to help as many people and share my life to as many people as possible. And that's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I never wanted to do social media. Um, however, I did joke around with one of my friends in college and I was like, let's just drop out of college and be social media influencer. And she was like, no. And I was like, yeah, you're right. We could never, <laughs> we could never. And then look at me today. I was like, okay. Because when I told my, when I told my parents, that I didn't want to go to school anymore. I was like, it's too hard. Like I'm struggling really bad. But then again, I had very good grades for the fact that I had to teach myself everything from math to biochemistry. Like I had a 3.6 GPA. Like that's very good in my eyes for college. Mm -hmm. um, however, my parents were like very, very accepting about it. And they said, if I turn 25 and I want to go back to school, then go back to school. They said, right now in your life, you're at a very, very healthy place with yourself and with your condition, because I never used to accept who I was. Um, however, now I am, and I just don't really have the care to convince anyone about anything. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, I'm very glad that I have a very supportive family and friends and a boyfriend because I wouldn't be who I was with, be who I am without them. Yeah. I think I, I, I'll just say um, to end here that I think what you're doing is so great because as I said before, growing up is so difficult. You're met with all sorts of obstacles. Everyone has things that they have about themselves that they dislike, or that could be a hindrance going forward, whether it's something they did in the past, whether it's something physical, mental, you know, any sort of issues. And what you're doing is taking um, things about your life, being transparent about it and, um, you know, letting people into your world and see that you are more than that, seeing that it doesn't define you and letting people understand um, Tourette's syndrome, which is such a, a you know, a, um, a little baby weenie. It's it's such a um, syndrome that is misunderstood. So my last question for you is, uh, you've talked about so many misconceptions, but if we had to do an uh, one thing of what is the biggest misconception that you want people to know about you, about Tourette's syndrome, about your OCD, what would that be for you that is your final message to everyone listening or watching? People with Tourette syndrome don't tick 24 seven. There has been days where I don't tick for three hours. There has been times where I don't tick for 20 minutes and it goes periodically, it goes back and forth. Um, people with Tourette's don't all cuss. Um, and again, 
people with Tourette's are still people. Um, they um, still have feelings and they, they, they're struggling the same way everyone else is. So yes, Tourette's looks different in everyone. And I'm not, my condition and the way that I deal with it isn't going to be the same as your cousin or your neighbor or your mom or your sister. It's going to look different and be different. However, people can go hours without ticking. Again, for the example of this podcast, the more focused I am on a conversation, the less ticks I have. The more focused I am in general, the less ticks I have. And I think that is a good thing, not a negative thing. And that if I can tick for 20 minutes, but then not tick for three hours, I feel like that is a beautiful thing. And that it shouldn't be looked at as I'm faking Tourette's or anyone's faking Tourette's because no one would know that I, who I am if I didn't post about Tourette syndrome or post about my condition. So I think that just give people grace because everyone's struggling and Tourette's looks different in everyone the same way that cerebral palsy looks different in everyone in the same way that cystic, cystic fibrosis looks different in everyone in the same way that epilepsy looks different in everyone. So. I think that's a great, great words. And I think the bottom line is to be kind because you never know what somebody is going through. No, uh, exactly. And everyone is going through something. So oh, yeah. uh, where could people find you? Where can people, um, you know, watch your stuff on uh, social media? Okay. So I have Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Um, I post the most on TikTok, which I don't even know my TikTok handle. I think it's Balin.Dupree. I could be wrong. Um, my Instagram, <laughs> my Instagram is Balin underscore Dupree. And my Snapchat is Balin Dupree. Awesome. Well, I'm going to friend you, follow you. I don't know what the word is for Snapchat. I have three people on my Snapchat as of last night, my daughter and her two best friends. Yeah, so, send me your Snapchat through text. I will, I will. And um, you are the best. You are an inspiration to people of all ages. I think you're terrific. And um, I just want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're so sweet and so beautiful. Thank I was going to tell you that beforehand, but well, you are beautiful. But thank you, Balin. Mwah. Of course. Thank you so much for listening to Misunderstood. I'm your host, Rachel Yucatel. Please be sure to subscribe to the show and give us a five-star rating and review. You can support the show by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash misunderstood with Rachel Yucatel. Do you have ideas for the show or want to reach out? Email us at info misunderstood podcast at gmail.com. That's spelled M-I-S-S understood. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Misunderstood.